Hello, I'm David Picciuto, the Drunken Woodworker. It is February 27th, 2014, episode number 8 of Weekly Woodworking Wrap-Up Review. I'm going to get this started with some uh, some bourbon, Lexington. Woo. I'm going to be trying Legend Brown Ale. This is out of Richmond, Virginia. I've never had this before. That's pretty good. Uh, a lot of times a brown ale can be a little heavy, but this is this is good. What have I been working on? I got a unique experience the other day. I got to take a behind the scenes trip to the Toledo Lucas County Public Library. I've got a great friend who works there and he gave me access to the dungeon down there. And while I was there, I had my camera and tape measure and I took photos and measurements of some card catalogs. I got to pull the drawers out, take a look at the joinery and, and see how, how it was built. Uh, I looked at three different card catalogs and I noticed all three were built by different makers. They all used different techniques. The one thing I found in common was the carcass was dovetailed on all of them. Two out of the three, the front of the drawers were dovetailed and the, the back of the drawers used a box joint or a finger joint. One out of the three had dovetails in the rear of, of the box as well. Two of them were full size ones. And then there was one, it was a four drawer desktop model. Pretty old, pretty pretty beat up. Nobody seems to know the exact year on it. I'm going to build one of these. I'm going to build a four drawer library card holder. I'm going to combine what I saw from the three of them and, and make my own. I'm definitely going to do the dovetails on the carcass and the front of the drawers. I'm going to do the box joint on the rear drawers. Woodcraft sells the, the card holder poles. I'm going to make one. That's going to be my, my prototype that I'm going to film the second one that I make. And I'm going to share that share that with you. This is going to be a fun project. It's going to be a combination of hand tools and, and power tools. And I'm going to be doing some half-blind dovetails on the drawers and through dovetails on the carcass. So I'm really looking forward to this project. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. And I cannot wait to share that with you. So uh, I've got a couple projects I'm going to build before that one. And then I'm going to move on to that one. So hopefully in April or May, I will bring that to you. I got a new toy for the shop. And I love it. I absolutely love it. This is the Bose SoundLink Mini. Uh, it's a Bluetooth speaker. It weighs a ton. It's really heavy. And then I can I can play music and podcasts from my phone or my computer onto here in the wood shop. It sounds amazing. The great thing is wherever tool that I'm at, this is there's no wire, so I can just take it over to that tool, set it down, and and do my 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 thing, and still hear my music and my podcast. It's really loud. It's just it's rechargeable and it works by Bluetooth. I, I really recommend this if you're looking for. A speaker for the shop this thing is it sounds amazing a new segment I'm gonna do for you is called little tipsy where I just bring you a quick little tip that I can show you on camera today I'm going to build a quick and easy trammel to draw a big circle so let's take a look at that if you ever need to draw large circles or curves all you need is a straight piece of wood or anything long and straight, two clamps, a pencil, and a screw. And what we do is we clamp the pencil to one side. I can then clamp the screw, which will be used as my pivot point, on the other side. And now we have a large trammel. So now you can draw very large curves or circles and you can make them as, as large or as, as small as you need it. So. That's all it takes to draw large circles and curves. Let's dive into some videos this week. This one comes from Make. Make is a great, great YouTube channel, very popular. It has some woodworking stuff, it has some electronic stuff, it has some, some hacks. If you like watching people build cool stuff, subscribe to Make. Then this one is titled Making Fun, Mission Control Desk. Check this out. This is so super cool. I wish I was a kid again. So this dad, he built his son this, this desk. And then when the kid is done doing his homework, he flips his desk up and he has this space control station. This is unbelievable. This is very clever. Good stuff. Many of you keep telling me I got to pose videos from Jimmy Diaresta. This is a beautiful credenza that he makes. Jimmy's been featured on Make as well. Check out that credenza. The Highland Woodworker. This is one of my favorite 
woodworking video channels. I love the Highland Woodworker. It's a magazine style show where Charles Brock, he's a he's a very he's a well-known chair maker, amazing woodworker. Uh, he hosts the show. I believe it's based out of Atlanta, Georgia. And there's some interviews and some tips and general information. This is TV broadcast quality show that is on the internet and it's free to you. I, I met Charles Brock a couple years ago. Super cool dude. Just very, very friendly. Just willing to give you his time. Check out one of my favorite YouTube channels, The Highland Woodworker. They have a new video out this week. Good stuff. Do I say good stuff enough? I think I say good stuff too much. Good stuff. 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 A video came across last night uh, by Arborist Blair Glenn. This is called Big Redwood Removal and Mill Job. If you ever want to see how a tree is cut down and milled, this is a great video. This is huge, huge redwood tree. Looks like looks to be in somebody's yard and they have to cut it down. It's starting to rot. They show you the, the whole process, how it gets cut down and how it gets milled to boards and they're gonna make tables out of this. Just good stuff, love it. Good stuff, good stuff. Emails. I want to be a woodworker. I don't consider myself one because I hardly have the space to work on projects. I live in a tiny condo surrounded by other tiny condos. My backyard is like a poop stain on a large man's whitey tidies. It's small, but it's there. I refinished a bookcase and a dresser. I even built a mini pallet table. But I start to feel bad when I make noise. I've heard people slam their windows. So, all I can do now is watch videos like yours and dream of the day I move into a place with a garage. Do you have any advice for people in my situation? John. Well, John, there's a lot of people in your situation. The best advice I think I can give you? Go the hand tool route. There's such a big hand tool movement right now. When you use hand tools, it's a lot safer. You're not throwing up a bunch of fine dust in the air and breathing that in. It's a lot quieter and you don't need as much space. And sometimes it can be cheaper depending on the tools that you go with. You'll need some saws to do some cross cuts, uh, different saws to do rips. If you want to do curves, you're going to need a coping saw, some planes. Many woodworkers find the hand tool route very rewarding. I do a little bit of both. I do mostly power tools and I'm starting to get into hand tools a little bit more and I, I'm now understanding the re reward that you get when you do something with, with a mallet and a, and, a, and a chisel. The problem with hand tools is it takes a little bit more learning. There's, there's the mechanics involved and just the, the knowledge that you need to approach the cut to get a nice clean square edge. There's some great hand tool internet celebrities out there, I would check out the Renaissance Woodworker. He has what's called the Hand Tool School. It's a paid membership, but you get in there and he has hundreds of videos. Uh, that's put on by Shannon Rogers. He's all hand tools. He's the leader in, in teaching hand tool woodworking. RenaissanceWoodworker.com. Another great hand tool user is Tom Fidgen. Uh, he posts a lot of videos. He doesn't teach. He just shows you what he does. There's no there's no talking in his videos, but he's just showing you how it's done. And they're done in such a brilliant, beautiful way. You get to see the elegance of using hand tools and, and how it's done. So check out Tom Fidgen. His website's called The Unplugged Workshop. Uh, I'll put a link down below. Uh, another big hand tool user is Chris Schwarz. He's not completely hand tools, but he's well known for using hand tools. I think he does mostly hand tools. I believe he was the editor of Popular Woodworking for a while. He still does some guest blogs on there. He is now on his own. He runs Lost Art Press. He's got a ton of books, a uh, ton of books. So do do an Amazon search. You'll, you'll find a bunch of his stuff or go to popularwoodworking.com. You'll find all kinds of, of, of books and videos of how to use hand tools hosted by Chris Schwarz. I found an article he wrote back in 2011 called Get Started in Hand Tool Working. I'll post a link down below. Uh, there's another link down below, six tiny workshops. These are not hand tool workshops, but these are workshops in a very tiny, small space. Good use of space. So check out these six tiny workshops. T check out the hand tool links. Don't just sit there and watch woodworking videos. You can find a way to do it. I am not a woodworker, but I use wood products. Do you have any recommendations for taking care of wood that sees daily use like cutting boards 
antique dining room table, and a bitchin' Chicago bandsaw box. Emily. Emily bought one of my bandsaw boxes, the bitchin' Chicago bandsaw box, uh, last year. Well, let's start with cutting board. You are going to want butcher's block oil. Uh, I use this for the cutting boards that I make. You gotta, you, you gotta oil them back up every so many months. Every, it depends on, on the usage. You'll see when the wood starts to get dry. This is called Howard Butcher Block and Cutting Board Oil. You don't want to buy that. Take some mineral oil. Coat it with some mineral oil. That'll work as well. You want to add a little bit more protection. Melt some paraffin wax into that mineral oil and then coat the cutting board with that. Kitchen table. Most kitchen tables usually have a good film of, of finish on there. So my suggestion for that is a furniture polish. Pledge will work. A regular old furniture polish for your kitchen table. My bandsaw box. That shouldn't need too much, too much work, but uh, if it starts to look dull after some time, uh, some paste wax. Just coat it with some paste wax, wipe on a coat, let it sit for a minute or two, and then take a, an old t-shirt or a rag and then just buff it off. It'll look like the day that I sold it to you. So, I hope that helps, Emily. Thank you, and thank you for buying my box last year. Mm. Next email. Sir, I'm a huge fan of woodworking and beards. And to see these forms of art come together in one package is quite the kettle of warm cider on a cold, brisk morning. This guy's a poet. He's good with his words. I am wanting to know what kind of software do you use to design your templates? I tried with paint, but it wasn't accurate enough or symmetrical. Is there anything you would recommend? Cheers. I currently have a Canadian club in my hand with Whiskey Stones. AZ. Well, AZ... There's two programs that I use. One is free, SketchUp. It's a 3D program. Uh, SketchUp kind of sucks to learn because it doesn't work like any other program that I know. Uh, the shortcuts are all different. Many, many woodworkers use SketchUp to draw up their plans. You don't need the paid version of SketchUp to do the woodworking stuff, so stick with the free. For the 2D stuff, I'm using Adobe Illustrator. I've been using Illustrator for many, many years. I used it back in college when I went to school for for graphics. I use Adobe Illustrator for 2D and SketchUp for 3D. AZ, I hope that helps. That's it with the emails. I would like to wish my neighbor and good buddy and fellow woodworker Chad Stanton of Wood Chopping Time a happy 100th video. If you're not familiar with Wood Chopping Time, check out, there'll be a link below. Him and Safety Dan are hilarious. Uh, Chad's been teaching the art of woodworking for a long time now. He's such a great guy. Uh, he lives just a few roads over from me. Happy 100, Chad. If you're watching, I would like you to come over here and co-host a show with me sometime. All right, happy 100. I've been debating on whether or not to talk about this on here. This was, this was absolutely amazing. Um, Randy Kelly heard me say on last week's episode that I didn't have an angle grinder. And he sent me this brand new Bosch angle grinder and an Arbor Tech turbo plane. Um, just, I, I can't believe anybody would do that. That's, that's pretty amazing stuff. I, the reason I debated about talking about this is I didn't want it to encourage other people to send me stuff. I don't, I don't want that. I really appreciate it. After I receive this, I promised him that I would learn how to use this and do some power sculpting and then make some videos. So that's what I'm going to do this this spring. Uh, I got a couple things in mind, uh, but I need to I need to pick up the technique first. So, uh, man, thanks, Randy. I really appreciate it. You didn't have to do that. I other people, please don't send me stuff. It's not it's not necessary, but. I've never had a stranger do that for me. That's that's so crazy. So, thank you. Thank you. Bottle planes. Bottle opener planes. I promised that I would give one away. So, many of you went to the website, filled out the form to win one of these wood hand plane bottle openers. So, we're going to draw a name right now. And I have all the names in this in this little all right, so we're gonna so we're gonna draw a name now to see who wins. Man, have I been drinking or what? What's going on? Let's 
Let's see. Let's see who's gonna win this guy. All right. And the winner is Michael Golden. Michael Golden, you are the winner. I don't know if I was just being a moron or if I was drunk or a little bit of both, but I forgot to put an email field in the form to to win this uh, for the first couple of days. So, Michael. I do not have your email address. If you're watching, please send me an email saying, hey, I'm Michael Gordon. Um, to prove that it's really you, send me your social security number, two credit card numbers, bank account number, and a routing number to prove that it's actually you. Joking aside, congratulations, Michael. Send me an email, give me your address, and I will ship this, this little bottle opener to you. I have more of these guys. So next week, I'm going to give another one away. To do so, go to drunkenwoodworker.com slash beer and fill out the survey I have there. I want to see what you think works, what doesn't work on the show, any suggestions that you have. Go to drunkenwoodworker.com slash beer, fill out the survey, and I will draw a winner for next week's Wood Plane Bottle Opener. I appreciate when you share this video. It helps me out. It gets me more viewers, the more viewers I get, the more emails I get, the more back and forth we have, and this becomes a conversation between me and all of you, and it benefits everybody. So please share the video. Uh, I got new t-shirts coming in next week. It's same same logo, but they're on black shirts. So that'll be coming. Uh, hopefully I'll have them by the next show. And that about wraps it up. Stay passionate and make something. I'll see you next week. To keep up with me, Subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, Pinterest, Tumblr, Instagram, and Etsy. And be sure to check out my website at drunkenwoodworker.com. Let's see who would have won if I didn't pick Michael. That's fun. Oh, Jake Kig. Too bad, Jake.